So now it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Sonia Martinez. Sonia is originally from the Dominican Republic and arrived in the United States in 1972. She lived in the South Bronx in New York City before coming to Oneida County in 1990. She co-founded and was recently appointed the first executive director of the Mohawk Valley Latino Association. Her mission in founding MVLS was to unite the Latino community and become a valuable resource and provide coordinated assistance in navigating education, healthcare, social services, equip, uh, employment, and so much more for Latinos in our community and beyond. It is now my pleasure to introduce Sonia Martinez. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. <laughs> Como esta? Everyone's good? Beautiful day in the Mohawk Valley. I can't believe it that today we have a sunny fall day, little bit of wind, but it's, it's great. You can actually feel the sun a little bit. Um, we have to enjoy these last few days of fall <laughs> before we get ready for winter months. Um, today, um, this is such an honor really humbled to be uh, where I am right now. Um, and thanks to my friend, Dr. Montgomery, all I had to say to him, I have no connection to SUNY Bali. I attend a lot of community meetings, but that's it. I don't get to talk to the students and would love to um, change that. So when he, when we met um, over a meal, of course, um, we, uh, he, the next couple of days, I received an email um, to be here today. So I am very, very excited to be here. Um, one of the things that um, I never get to talk about, I was a, a, a student briefly. Um, I took a marketing class here to learn about how to um, promote my organization. Well, that was a long time ago. I can't even remember the year, but I, I did. I was part of SUNY IT then um, for a brief uh, moment. But anyways, so I'm here today um, and I'm very excited um, to talk about um, my organization. I'm a co-founder and it's been my dream to help my community and uh, unite the ethnic community, um, communities of color of the Mohawk Valley. Um, as Andrew said, I came from Dominican Republic. I was actually 13 years old, no English, right? From an island that, you know, you only learned how to say gracias, buenos dias in English, that was it. And I came to this country and went to uh, live in the South Bronx. And now I'm here. The Mohawk Valley has been my, my home since since those days, um, I always say I'm from the Mohawk Valley. I no longer say I'm from the Bronx, but once there's a Bronx person in the Bronx, yes, recognize that, um, still in my blood. Um, so how did I get here? After college, oh, by the way, I attended Herkimer County uh, Community College. And back then it was always HCCC. Um, got to meet so many wonderful people there, um, received an, um, an associate's degree in travel and tourism, um, worked in that industry for about uh, five years, and then um, decided that I needed to do something else. Um, I couldn't get a job. I wanted to be an airline student, believe it or not. But back then there was this thing about being short. <laughs> the height did not help. I could not reach the luggage compartment so I, they would not hire me. Literally, that's what I was told. If you can't reach the door to open that luggage compartment, I'm sorry, we can't hire you. <laughs> um, of course, you know, that's illegal today. Um, so that's the reason I left the travel and tourism industry. I did work briefly uh, with a 16 county 
uh, travel, travel and tourism agency, nonprofit. That was my first um, exposure within the nonprofit world. Um, worked there. And then um, I learned all about the Mohawk Valley, the beautiful Mohawk Valley. And I learned another little secret that a lot of people don't know. Um, I used to uh, announce the foliage in the Mohawk Valley every year while I was working there. Nobody else wanted to do it. The, uh, my executive director didn't want to do it. So it was my job to call all the radio stations in the 16 county area to announce the foliage. I will have people call me call the office and let me know how the Adirondack was doing, how the Southern Tier was doing, and I will call the radio station and announce that. So that was a little bit of exposure in the radio industry also. It was fun. It was definitely something different. I was a very shy person um, back then. It was, thank God that I was in my office talking and that was being recorded because I don't think I could do it in front of a live audience then, um, but it was fun. Um, so I learned a lot while I worked there, learned about our beautiful area, the people. Um, I used to travel to Albany all the time, also representing the agency because it was just the two of us in the, in the office. Uh, we had over a thousand members in the agency and we had to keep them happy because they, they brought people to the Mohawk Valley to visit, play, and you know, so um, it was a great experience. <clears throat> so then um, I had um, thought about what else is there, you know, um, for me. Then um, I started working for Excellus Blue Cross and Blue Shields. Back then was, um, I can't even remember the name but it was not Excellus. I think it was the hospital plan or something like that, Blue Cross and Blue Shields. And we were in downtown and I used to travel to Utica back uh, on a bus. It was, you could travel to the Valley and Utica on a, on a bus daily back then. And that's how, I didn't even drive by the way. I did not learn, I did not know how to drive. So that's how I started learning about Utica and uh, all the, um, the people. And I used to see Latinos here and there, very few um, back, that was 80s. And I remember um, at Excellus, there was just another Latina and myself. That was it. That was my access to the Latino community in Utica. She had lived here all her life. And, um, you know, we, used to, we, had, we were in different departments, but we talked because, you know, when we saw each other, of course, when you speak another language, that's the first thing you do is you get so excited, you start talking that language with the person and um, to get more acquainted. Um, so then, um, um, I decided I needed to move here. I had my daughter, then I had my son, and uh, being in the valley was quite different. Um, and this is where I would come and purchase some of my Latino heritage foods that I wanted my children to learn about their heritage through me. So I was constantly in Utica. So I decided I wanted to move. I started um, searching where and everything in the other schools, and then um, started seeing more and more Latinos here and there, supermarkets. <clears throat> and then um, decided to move to New York Nose. Very small town. The school system, I loved it because it was from K through 12. They all knew each other, the kids, they all knew each other. So, um, we lived there for about 14 years in New York Mills. My daughter graduated high school. My son um, got to be until eighth grade, then moved to Utica. Um, so we had Utica, it was booming. 
it was really booming. I started seeing more and more Latinos. I started seeing the needs. I would go to DMV, I would go to a doctor's office and started seeing people struggling so much with the language. Um, there was no such thing back then as an interpreter, right? If you think about it, there was no such thing. You will see a mom and dad and a child. The child was translating for the parents at a doctor's office. Today, that's illegal. Um, <clears throat> you started seeing um, other um, like refugees started coming in and you saw the need more and more. The refugee centers really started opening up more services for them. Like they started the interpreting services. Mommy, uh, it was a multicultural association of interpreters, something like that. They don't, they don't no longer in existence, but they used to be big back then. Um, so that's when I um, decided, and then I started working at Excellus. They moved from downtown to the business park. And I was put, uh, I had learned so much in that company. They really gave me the opportunity to be who I am today. And I always thank um, my, the regional vice president, Eve Vanderwall, for that. Because once she became vice president, regional vice president, she really opened up a lot of benefits for the employees. And one of the things was they created a DNI group. And guess who was? the chair, the team lead for that. <laughs> um, I had no idea what I was doing, but she met with me and explained, and you know, she saw something in me that I did not even see myself. I did not see myself as a leader. I just wanted to be a normal person, you know, work, take care of my children, take care of my community that I was doing a little bit you know, um, so I, she saw that, that I was really developing myself as a leader. So um, I was made the team lead for the diversity and inclusion group, employee group. So I started networking in the community with other agencies, the bigger agencies. Um, and YWCA was one of them. I would bring the executive director to talk about domestic violence. Like this time, October is domestic violence month. I would bring um, Asian uh, leaders to talk about um, the Asian community when we celebrated those heritages, heritage for the different ethnicities. So that's how I started really developing my leadership skills. Um, by networking in the community and bringing that information to my coworkers, my colleagues. Um, and I really enjoyed that. In the meantime, I was seeing a lot, you know, the needs multiplying in my community. I then met, that's where I met my friend and colleague, um, Tony Colon, who helped create the Mohawk Valley Latino Association along two others, um, from the community who have moved on. To, they've both, weird, they both moved to Florida. <laughs> but Tony and I have kept the Mohawk Valley our home for, for as long as, you know, God allows us to. And um, that's how MDLA um, started. And we will sit um, in my kitchen table and talk about what it was, how are we going to create this agency association to help our community? Because we both saw the needs so much, um, the population increasing um, everywhere. Uh, it was increasing so much that we got Goya products here. That was like so cool. Uh, Price Chopper came into town and started bringing a lot of the ethnic foods for the Latino community. That was, you know, awesome. We started seeing more Latinos opening businesses. We, we had bodegas, we had, um, we still have um, hair salons, even daycares. There's a little bit of everything, uh, type of business within the Latino community in Utica, uh, 
right now. Over 70 businesses, are like uh, small businesses are Latino here in Utica between restaurants, barbershops, um, the hair salons, daycares, et cetera. Um, we now have a radio station. It's Soto Latino Radio. It's that's that's our latest um, acknowledgement that the need someone saw the need how to communicate that piece was missing the communication piece in their own language of the Latino community. Um, and it came in just in time. COVID hit, and I was on the radio. Uh, the owner, she's great, wonderful person called me and say, Sonia, whatever you need, you want to announce to your community in your language, I'm not going to charge you. You, you know, speak to your, to your community. They need it. I know that they need it. So that's how I got started communicating in Spanish on the radio station about COVID and a lot of different other things uh, that we have collaborating with that radio station. Um, you also see a lot of um, a lot more Latinos being hired in different um, agencies, like the bigger agencies, nonprofits. You see a lot more of them, and I feel proud of that because finally, someone is listening. They're listening. They see the need. They see the growth. You know, the Latino community from when I first started in VLA to now, 2010 we were um, like four, five percent, you know, um, the census now, there was a big article in the newspaper that we grew 3000 in 10 years. That's amazing. And to me, it's probably more than that, probably more. Because my office is crazy every day. I can tell you, if I show you my phone, I'm probably have about 10 10 phone calls and, you know, and then the office uh, number also is very busy. Uh, people, the needs, people moving, they want to buy a house, they want to rent an apartment, they need social services, they need to find a job, you know, um, we're it. So the word, what I, what Tony and I set out to do and the two others is really worked. Um, because our mission is to educate and uh, raise the awareness, empower our Latino community in the Mohawk Valley. And it's, it's happened. You know, we wanted the name MVLA to be at every Latino household to be known. We want to be known for giving our Latino brothers and sisters a place to go and ask questions. We're a very proud culture. We're gonna talk in our own language. We get together, even though we're bilingual, we get together, we're gonna to speak our language because that's how we feel that we're family. We're very proud of that. And that's what MVLA is today. We're a family. We just moved our offices from where we worked from 17 years. We were at the DeSalle Center in downtown to a very small house one floor i'm excited because i have a kitchen <laughs> i can cook <laughs> um and um our plans are really to make bigger and better things for the latino community we now have access to we're creating a community space and a garden and we have our own students our own children working in the in that space we had a group from the Yacht Scholar Program this year, this past summer, that designed the community space and garden. We had um, summer youth uh, work the garden, clean up the area, painted um, the, um, the fence. We plan to have a mural, murals on the fence plan to have a contest for adults, kids, to design what they want the murals to look like, from Black Lives Matters to 
you know, Latino heritage, Asian heritage, because now where we are, the area is, we're all surrounding, surrounded by our different cultures. Uh, Blacks, Latinos, Asians, Bosnians, we want everyone to feel like it's their space. It's not mine. I just had a vision. Um, so I want the community to feel, to have an ownership in what they want the space to look like. We're going to have a garden with vegetables, fruits, herbs for people to enjoy and just come in if somebody needs something. You know, instead of walking or driving to a supermarket, they can come to our space and pick up some cilantro or mint, lavender, of flowers to make a bouquet for grandma, you know, that type of thing. That's what we want for the community. We're right um, smack in the, um, in the Cornhill area and the neighbors, they, they can't believe it that this is happening in their neighborhood. They really enjoy, they come by and they ask questions. Well, who are you guys? What are you doing? It looks beautiful. We can't wait. So we've been getting a lot of support and we're very proud of that. Um, I have been on so many boards um, throughout this tra trajectory of mine to learn uh, really how to um, bring the message to the community. I want people to feel comfortable to come to, to MVLA. And we just don't have Latinos coming. I have everybody coming because I have the network of people that I've made throughout the years from all the different boards to community events. Just for instance, tonight, there's a big community event that our community foundation is hosting at the museum. You never saw that before at the Munson Williams. You know, they've opened the board, the doors to the community. That 10 years ago, you never heard of that before. So people are really making an investment into diversity and inclusion in our community. They're really, you know, is it's no longer, I can't say no longer the talk, it's now they're doing the talk and they're doing the walk. It's just what we need. Really what we need. Um, I used to be on the Boy Scouts board. I used to be on the, um, the Utica Library board. I was there for nine years learning about what to do, how do they bring the community to the library. They do a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, there's just so many. I'm on the Monson Williams Proctor board. I'm on the uh, Central New York Arts Council board. So it's, I've made it my mission to be at the table through all the different needs that my community has, because I want to know who I need to pick up a phone, my phone and call and say, this is what I need. This is what this person needs. Can we make it happen? That's the only way. You network. Network is so important. And don't be afraid. I mean, I remember I was a, this 13 year old from the Caribbean island that didn't speak English. And, you know, here I am talking to you guys, I would have never <laughs> thought in my wildest dream that I will be a SUNY Poly speaking to you all about my mission in life as a leader in the community. Um, one of my proudest moments, I've had two so far this year, um, I was awarded uh, a plaque by my own community. Um, and I'm sorry, I get, sometimes I really get excited and very um, um, sensitive to that, that I was recognized by my community as their leader. You know, they say it, I don't say it, they say it. So now, you know, people say, you need to say it because this is who you are, you know? Um, so uh, I have to get used to that. Um, they gave me a plaque for the services, for the, for all that I have done, that I have been able to open doors for them. And I'm very proud of that. I was also recognized by um, a show called uh, Behind a Woman, which is um, WCNY PBS Network. Um, 
I was nominated by another colleague of mine, um, nominated to tell my story, how I became a leader, how I was um, here today. And my story was told on WCNY. I mean, that's, I still can't believe it. I pinch myself all the time. Um, sometimes I, I have the, the half hour show, you know, saved on my computer and I click on it and I can't even finish it because I start crying. <laughs> um, and then um, this week um, was honored to receive an assemblywoman, Marisa Davila from Brooklyn, New York. She wanted to learn about Utica. She hears so much from our assemblywoman about the Latino community that she wanted to come and learn more so she can help our assemblywoman with the needs of the Latino community. So somebody's listening, you know, she's actually listening. And that's what I tell anyone, our people of color, our communities, you just need to ask, what's the worst they're gonna say? They can say no today, but if you're persistent, tomorrow they're gonna say yes, right? Don't, don't ever think that you can't do what you set out to do in your life. And of course, education. I'm so big in that. It's, I wish I could, I could be in college, back in college. I loved my college experience. You know, even though it was just two years at Herkimer, that hill, if you've, anybody has seen Herkimer, I used to walk that hill for two years. I didn't know how to drive. I didn't have friends. Just my best friend from high school and I came here and we used to walk from South Main Street in Herkimer, that hill for two years. And back then, oh my God, in the winter times, it was very, very hard. So if I could do it, anyone can do it. You just need to ask, you know, you just need to ask, don't be afraid. I tell that to, uh, we have a youth group and I have, um, brought them to different college campuses that they've never thought in their wildest dream that they could go to college. They don't hear that too often. You know, sometimes our Latino parents didn't finish third grade, fifth grade, high school. They don't hear that. Yes, your parents, the parents bring you here so you can become better. That's what my dad did. My dad knew that in Dominican Republic, as a woman, I was not going to make it into any career. Today, I have doctors, lawyers coming to live in Utica from the Dominican Republic because they can't make it. There's, there's no jobs for them. And they're here at a factory, you know, making, making minimum wage because they want better things for their children so they come here they give up on their dreams for their children and that's what latino parents do and grandmas i'm a grandmother i love my grandkids i have three um three boys uh, my oldest is attending mbcc and his dream is to transfer to suny poly to finish his career his dream he's a graphic he's going for graphic design and he wants to do um, video graphic design. So that's his dream. And, you know, I'm pushing him every day. You got to go to college. You got to go to college. And, you know, that's why he's, he's, he's concentration. That's all he wants. You know, he's a young man. He's going to be 19 years old soon. So people will say, oh, do you have a girlfriend? No, my nanny wouldn't allow that. I'm going to college. <laughs> so um you know that's what that's what we do that's what we do we just encourage our children to get an education you know in Utica unfortunately there's some things going on that hopefully will get um fixed with the community's help community foundation I know that's going to be big tonight the education system in Utica because it's, there's no equality for all students, unfortunately. Um, so I'm sure we're gonna have that big conversation tonight. 
I thought that how how to fix that. Uh, um, you know, that's my story. Did I take too much time? <laughs> I could say so much more. Thank you so much, Sonia, for sharing your story and being an ambassador for our community and certainly being an ambassador for SUNY Poly.